do it alone. And nobody really should ever think that they should go alone on LinkedIn. You don't have to. <laughs> that old uh, African proverb, right? If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Mm. That's a lot of what we do. And that's that ties right into those collaborative articles because it's the community that's coming together to bring the content to the table of those articles so that we can go together. So people can learn and we can exchange ideas and build from there. So I love that part of collaborative articles. I love that. I love that. And that, so our topic today is earning a LinkedIn community top voice badge. This is a hundred percent tied to collaborative articles. So it's kind of two topics in one, but the emphasis is on the word community. Because just like you, you, you said a moment ago, it takes a village. It takes a village to earn one of these badges. You can't yeah. just, you know, get out and do it by yourself and just say, I don't need, I don't need my community. You need a community for this. So Kevin, you have one of these badges. I don't, I'm trying, but yes, it's, it's not easy. It's not easy because yeah. it's a two part process. And so can you just, for anybody who doesn't even know about this program, can you just walk them through? How do you Absolutely. how do you earn? How do you earn the badge? Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna take it one step back. You know, okay. on LinkedIn there was always influencers, right? These were like movie stars on LinkedIn, right? They got extra push. They dominated our feed. LinkedIn said, you know what? No more of that. We're gonna take away influencers. There's no influencers anymore. We're gonna throw them into top voices, right? And top voices was always kind of a, a celebutant competition, right? If the LinkedIn news editors liked you, liked the content you put out there, then they would anoint you as a top voice. You didn't have to earn it. The community on LinkedIn didn't say you had it per se, but those editors did. And they're smart people, so they should know something. And everybody I've run into as a top voice deserves the top voice. They're, they're really sharp people. But LinkedIn said, you know what? We always have the same top voices all the time. And we need to find new top voices, right? So that's really where this concept came up was to create a community top voice. And that basically means you get invited in because they know you have a particular skill that's in demand, right? People want to know about it. People want to get better at it. And this is kind of LinkedIn skill, hire for skills, right? And all that. So they said, you know, if you have that presence on your LinkedIn, you got a lot of uh, people endorsing you for those skills, and you're also creating content and commenting and engaging that shows you have those same skills, then we're going to invite you in to start collaborating on articles, right? And... If you're in the, originally it was, if you're in the top 30% of that particular skill, then they would award you a badge. And the badge is good for 60 days, right? The way you get awarded that badge is not the editors. They no longer have a say. Now it is LinkedIn, the community, your, your network, maybe even outside of your network, right? Because these articles are open to, all six degrees on LinkedIn. Mm. So very few times do you get that opportunity. You do a post, you're still going to be limited within your three degrees. Your network is who can see your post. Outside of your network, they're not going to see it because they can't see you, right? That mm. whole six degrees of separation. This is one chance you can be exposed to basically everybody on LinkedIn, right? That to me is incredible. And so that community is who then says, you know what, Jillian's contribution, Kevin's contributions, Bob's, whatever it is, that has a lot of value. And I'm going to click on this button that says, you know, upvote, right? And then they count the upvotes. And if you're supposedly, the way it was, top 30% in that skill set, you got into the badge. Now, I don't know if that top 30% is still what it is. You know, uh, or if they've changed that. Now, I do know 
that there is a little bit of human intervention in the process as well. Some of the things that they're going to look for in the content that you're sharing, right, is they want to see a, a personal value add. So you could put content out there that scores well, gets upvoted well, but they want to see the individuals getting these badges are the ones who are sharing that experience. You know, you could talk about, for me, I talk about hiring over 200 people internationally, you know, building offices in Hong Kong, Dubai, United Arab Emirates. That helps set my story when I'm making my comments and they're looking for that. So there's a little human intervention in there. There's a little guidance on top of the votes, but the votes are really what pushes it forward. And I find that fascinating. Hmm. So I did not realize this. So let me just clarify. So when there's an article and uh, say I respond to it and I'm, I'm a contributor, people outside my network, is it like everyone on LinkedIn can see these Anybody articles? Anybody can see like the articles. And wow. they can see your comment on there. Whereas if they tried to go to your profile, they probably, if they were outside of your third degree, they wouldn't even be able to see your profile. But they can hmm. see your comment and they can upvote you if it is of value. Now, what's nice about that is now it's not just friends and family making us look good, right? It's everybody. And I think that's hmm. really kind of a cool system. And they've kind of taken it away technically from the editors, these news editors choosing people, right, to the system choosing them. And right. what I find fascinating is, you know, this is still a beta. Most people don't realize that. They didn't tell anybody that, but now they're starting to say it, right, a little mm -hmm. bit in, in some of the conversations. This is a beta. They're figuring it out. It's not ironed out, right? It's evolving. Even the name has changed. Mm -hmm. When this first launched, it was called AI-powered, collaborative articles and the collaborative was small right mm. like linkedin oh the first first words always big right big big letter <laughs> capital they got rid of the ai powered and they just went now to collaborative articles now that tells me a couple of things not everybody's impressed with ai right mm. or they don't really want to read an article that sounds like ai wrote it Right. I can do that all the time. I could just go to chat GP and write my own personal ones that I could read if I wanted that. Right. So I think what LinkedIn is kind of telling us in this process is although AI can create a base of an article, it can't put in the value into that article that human experience can. Mm. And that's the contributors, the collaborators. Right. And that's why it now became collaborative article, big C, little a. That's the definition of it now, because they know that the collaborative part is the most important. That's the people bringing something to the table that basically a computer software program doesn't have, or if it did, it might have pretended it had, but it really doesn't, right? So it's that personal experience piece that LinkedIn is now realizing. So to me, you know, we, we think about LinkedIn, it's had a new owner for a while, right? Microsoft, Microsoft invested heavily into uh, chat GTP. That's why we're seeing a lot of AI features come out on LinkedIn. I think it's why some of the regular features have slowed down because they're focusing on more AI. That in that process that they're bringing these in, every single AI feature that LinkedIn is bringing in it's always saying, look at it first, edit it, make it yours, because this is just basic stuff. It's not the solution. Mm. And so this is really LinkedIn admitting that, hey, it can be a muse, right? AI can be a muse, but it's not an artist. Mm. And so by doing this, it's really them saying, you know, we need you, we need your input. And I think that's fantastic. And as these editors are managing, they, they actually start the process, right? They go in to their uh, access into chat GTP, I'm sure. Uh, they go in there and they start writing about certain skills, certain topics, right? They give prompts and then the AI creates the base article for them. Hmm. And we come in 
and make that base something fantastic. And I think that's, to me, that's really kind of a neat creation process. I love that. I love that. And I love that they're Google searchable so that, you know, you they're, they're getting indexed by Google oh, yeah. so that Indeed. now people will come to LinkedIn if they're, mm -hmm. you know, typing and saying, hey, I want to learn about resumes or I want to learn about live streaming or whatever. And it will bring up those topics. So, well, you I know, that's and here's, cool. here's the crazy thing. The reason that, you know, all these big search engines are indexing this stuff immediately is because it appears as if it was written by the editors, the news editors for LinkedIn. And they've always immediately indexed those articles that they wrote. So we're getting the same uh, SEO juice. Yeah, exactly. As these news editors are getting. And interesting enough, I and I didn't do this on purpose. There was a comment that I made that I redirected it to a YouTube video on LinkedIn's ATS resume formatter, right? And I put the link in there. Guess what has happened to that particular video on my YouTube channel? I'm hoping it went up. Like it's like lots three of views. times any of the other videos, and it's not my best video. And I know oh. it's because it was indexed. And now, if you go into Google and you put ATS LinkedIn, it's the top, you know, resource that comes out. And I know that it was all related to the exposure, right? from that indexing of these articles because they're looked upon as if they were LinkedIn news editor articles. So interesting. Is incredible. You know, so external links are not penalized in these, um, in these contributions then. One of the things they've said is you should, you know, best practices of LinkedIn, obviously, right? You shouldn't be sending them to a lead form or some malicious codes or anything like that. Or just your website for just yeah. website's sake. Yeah, if you're throwing it in there, it better have purpose behind your conversation. Got right? it. And they said, you know, if you get too self-promotional, at any moment, they can pull your badge and your ability to contribute. So mm. there's, there's kind of a, a delicate balance between that. Right. Walk the tightrope. <laughs> exactly. So if you're going to if you're going to put a link in there, yes, it will take the link. Yes, that link will get indexed, which is really cool. But if you do too much of it, you know, you could lose the opportunity to continue on. Got now, it. I'll, I will tell you one of the things that I find fascinating is there's there's a lot of people who were given the opportunity to do this. And have walked away. Mm. Said, I'm just not going to do it. Right. There's a lot of people who want to do it, can't get in. <laughs> right? So they're still trying to figure out what that is. You know, what does that look like? And, you know, how do we get the right people in there that want to participate in it? And I think they're going to get better at that. You know, they're supposed to very soon, if you're reading these articles, because they know, right, if you're reading them, if you're sharing them as part of your feed and making comments on them that way, right, you're collaborating that way, if you are... Um, upvoting, they recognize that. And then they start the analysis on you. So if you mm -hmm. want to become, you know, one of these collaborators, you've got to participate in the process right now at that level to get to the next level, to get to kind of the review and bring in, right? And I've known a few people who've successfully pulled it off very quickly within a matter of three, four weeks. I've known other people who have struggled with it Again, there's a lot of dynamics there, so I don't know exactly what that answer is, but uh, it is there. It's possible um, to me, if we look at the, there's a group, right? The collaborative articles, it's a closed group. If you look out how many participants are in there, I don't know if you looked at that. Yeah, it's like 300 plus or something. That is, you think about it, people who are doing this are actively in that group. That's a very, very small percentage of what, almost a billion people. Yeah, that's like that's like a tiny beta group. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So if you're in there, do it. If you want to be in that group, start courting the process, right? Because right. I think there's a huge advantage 
with everything that's going on with AI, with Microsoft, with LinkedIn, the people who are in here and participating and helping others on LinkedIn, because that's one of the best reasons to be here, right? They will be rewarded. And yeah, it's a little bit of a clunky system. There are things that we would love to see improved, but it is a system, it's working, and there's a lot of advantages into participating in it. So I think you know people should look at it in that sense. It's not perfect, but tell me when anything on LinkedIn has been perfect. You know, they're trying to make things for this billion people, almost a billion people, right? It's hard to get it perfect, especially with all the code that they build upon. But they're trying and they're making improvements. And that's really about what we're doing right now is, is discovering what works and what doesn't work. Exactly. Uh, Exactly. So, so Kevin, you have your, you, you earned your first badge and people who, who don't know this, you can actually earn multiple badges. And mm -hmm. then if you have more than one, then you can actually choose which one shows up on your profile. So that's yes. kind of nice that you have that power. So I um, wish it just said two badges, like click here to find out more. <laughs> right. Yeah. And they're, show not them gonna, the list, they're not going to click. Right? Uh, yeah. I don't know why they leave one up where they could just say, you know, the number of badges you have. I think that would be more impressive. Um, yeah. So it's a, it's a little odd in that sense, but again, hopefully they listen to that feedback and they make those things available or just let us have badges like, like a, like a, like a general, right? Just put all those badges on our profile. <laughs> We've got 10. Let us show right, 10. Right. <laughs> slide right, you know, like right. your featured section, you know, just keep sliding and you can see no, all the badges. Doesn't cost anybody anything, right? Give me all my badges. <laughs> so, so essentially you could win a badge or not win, but you could earn a badge right. no. for any topic. So it's like, I could say, oh, I want, or is it really according to your skills? So do you really need to stay in your own lane? Like, would it be ridiculous if I went and I'm going to earn a badge for AI, you know, when that's like not my Yes topic. and no, right? The initially your high ranked skills that you have been writing about on LinkedIn, those are the ones that get you invited. Once you're invited, you can collaborate on any skill article, right? Mm -hmm. So if you want to do cardiovascular surgery <laughs> and have some value to add, you could do that and hopefully get some upvotes, right? And get to the top. Now, it is still funny because I think the first badge I ever saw issued, Min Mindy Hearn got the first badge I ever saw issued. She got it for one comment mm -hmm. and it only had a couple of upvotes. So pick your categories right that you're going to compete in by if you if you choose something like leadership right and there are a thousand people commenting collaborating on leadership getting into that top 30 percent is going to be tough right but you still might want to do that then you might want to pick one that's a little less competitive right to get a badge and so look at those things in the sense of how much time you need to put in now, I've talked to people who've gotten the leadership badge and they're talking about five to 10 comments every single day, seven days a week. Oh, I couldn't do that. That to me isn't worth that badge, right? But for some people, it absolutely is. And, you know, it is interesting. I've already had people comment to me that, oh, you must know what you're talking about because you have the badge. Mm. So it's building well, credibility. Yeah, you know, I think it's kind of funny, but, uh, you know, it, it is what it is because I've always talked about what I talk about. It hasn't changed. Just what has changed is the exposure and the award of that badge, right? Mm. So mm. nothing else has changed. I didn't get smarter all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just was able to get a, the word out there a little further. And so I think that's neat. The other thing, as we're contributing on this, it's one of the few times that our contribution hits our full network feed. Mm. So most of the time you could post something and you're lucky if a small percentage of your network actually sees it or it actually gets into their feed or they get an email about it or you know notification. Here, if you do it, everybody within your network supposedly will get some type of notification, whether you know it's email driven, it's in the notification area, or shows up in the feed, everybody will get that, that you've contributed, right? 
into it. And so to me, that has a value because not all the time can you post every day, right? It's but a top of mind. Add, top yeah, you of get mind. a paragraph, right? You see that, you got a spark. Oh, I know how to answer that. Boom, I'm done. I'm now in the feed constantly when I do that. Mm. So I like that. Now, one thing I do is once you've kind of figured out the skills that you want to compete in, right? And there is one main page. It is um, actually the uh, skills path page that lists all the categories, right? There's another new page that lists the main categories and then the subcategories once you get into those. That's a little more clunky to me, but some people like that better. It's more visual. Um, but once you've figured those out, go back from the article level back to the skill level and then bookmark it. Hmm. What that means is every time you open your browser, if I've got time and I want to talk about resume writing or branding or you know whatever it is, I can click that bookmark, boom, there's the latest collaborative articles for me to comment on. I'm not spending any time trying to chase them around. Mm. So I think that's a big plus, a good way to kind of stay organized. Um, I've got to get better at it. So I use that, but I don't do it every day. And, you know, to yeah. me, I don't have the time to do it every day. I wish I did. Yeah. I'm, I think we're all learning together. And I like what you started about that. It kind of all goes back to your skills. So that's probably for anybody who's like, okay, I'm, I don't have access to this just yet, but this sounds interesting. So when it kind of comes and gets rolled out mm -hmm. to me, and I think you can actually click and get on, like if you go to one of the articles, you can say, I, I, I would like to be a part of this. And I think you can apply and get on like a wait list or something. They say or did they take that away? I've never seen it yet. I think oh, okay. that's rolling out right now but I haven't physically seen it, so. I wonder if we don't see it, but maybe new people see it. So well, I've not you know. had anybody send it to me. Oh, <laughs> so okay. Normally okay. if somebody sees it, they'll say, hey, what's that? But I haven't seen it. And I know some people who've been kind of hot and heavy pursuing this and they haven't seen it. So the okay. way the wording, I think in the group is it's on its way. Okay. Right? So it means it's but probably trickling out and then going through the, the rollout process. But yes, absolutely. But even if you don't see that, if you are liking, you know, the, the, the articles, if you are upvoting and if you are even sharing those articles as part of your content, right. And commenting on them yourself, they do see that and they will recognize that and they'll invite you in as opposed to you asking to be invited. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. I can yeah. see that. So speaking of community, let's let's hop over to our uh, who who has the coveted uh, front row today. We have Mary Wu. She did it. Wow. <laughs> Jillian Whitney and Kevin D. Turner. Yay, Mary, you got in. The, you got in the front row. Jeff saved it for you. Uh, no wonder the joint is standing room only. Well, that's good. Thank you, Mary. We appreciate that. We have uh, Mr. Mr. Dan Roth, the other Dan Roth in the house saying, may I? The Dan Martin? Roth. <laughs> the, the Dan Roth, the Dan Roth. We have Leslie coming in from Florida. Hey, from Florida. Hey. We've got, we're all over the world today. I'm so excited to see Kevin D. Great. Oh, there we go. We got a new name for you. Kevin D. Great. That's awesome. And we got another Texan in the house. G is here. Yay. Sounding in is two of my faves on this hot, hot topic. And you know, G kind of said, you know, hey, there's so much to this. It's kind of a little, you know, not that it's overwhelming or anything, but it's kind of like there's a lot to this. And, you know, there are help topics, correct, mm -hmm. Kevin? There mm -hmm. are help there topics are. on how this all works. And I think, you know, getting our skills, and this is probably a really good excuse to go get those skills in order on our profiles right. and just say, you know, because in the beginning, I was getting a lot for SEO. And I was just like, SEO, yuck. But that's because that that's one of your highly rated thing. skills. Yeah, that's a high, yeah, that was one yeah. of my highly rated skills. But that was years ago, I was doing SEO. So I moved that on down to the bottom of my profile. And anytime we're picking our skills, and then you and I've had this conversation a few times. When you're typing in that skill, take from the drop down box, right? That's your market value filter. 
that's the one that they're going to see on the other side. If you type it out, make it your own, even spell it the same, but you didn't select from the drop down box, they might not see you. You might not be in that filter. So mm. make sure you're using the right skills and get them endorsed. Have, have skill parties, right? Invite a hundred of your friends to go say, hey, you know what? I'm going to look at your profile. I'm going to give you every skill I know you have. I'm not going to give you ones I don't, right? But I'm going to give you every one. Please come to mind, do the same. And, you know, they don't have to. There's no requirement for it. But you'd be surprised how much that will generate and bring those skills up and maybe get you the presence to be then able to collaborate. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I, I personally found that, like, if you go and endorse somebody and you don't ask for anything, chances are that person will go, oh, that felt kind of nice. Maybe yeah. I'll go. And and so it, even if they, it's nice if they pay it back to you, but sometimes too, they just pay it forward too. So it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a real quick win to, oh, to you know, and I always think if you know somebody who's looking for a job, one of the kindest things you could do is skills endorsements and, mm -hmm. you know, recommendations. These are just like really doesn't cost any money, folks. It's great. <laughs> Absolutely. One of the things so we have, mm -hmm. I was going to say, one of the things that I've, I've heard a lot of people kind of panic with, because really nobody knows with, with like uh, all this AI that's going out there, who owns the copyright, right? Mm. Here's the good thing about LinkedIn. LinkedIn timestamps everything that you produce on LinkedIn. Your agreement that you sign with LinkedIn is you own the copyright of any content you produce on LinkedIn. Okay. Whether it's in a collaborative article, whether it's a post, whether it's even a comment, every one of those is recorded and time stamped. If somebody picked up that content, you could on LinkedIn, and I've done this before, you can go to LinkedIn and you can set up a form for copyright infringement and they will take that other piece down immediately because all they got to do is look, wow, Kevin put this out three weeks ago. You put this out four days ago. The words exactly match or 80% of them. Boom, you're out. That's really cool. And the fact that you don't have to worry about it in this sense that it's going in, you know, you still own it. They're backing you up. And the way Google sits with LinkedIn, indexing everything LinkedIn does, right? Mm -hmm. The same process is happening. And Google is the number one uh, engine behind plagiarism checks. So you're safe in that sense. The only time I would ever worry about it is if that user agreement changes and all of a sudden says, well, you kind of do, but you kind of don't, right? Then you can worry. But right now, the way it's all legally set up, we own the rights to it. We give them basic use because they're displaying it on the website, right? But we own it. I love that. I love that. I love that. Okay, so Kevin, we have uh, reached the end of our 30 minutes, oh. as, as we knew we would, because this is a huge topic. And, you know, we might even need to come back like in, in a couple of months and just kind of like, where are we at with this? Because I think where we're at today I think it's evolving and changing. And as more people get in and more people leave, I think this is a different program. So it's like you said, it's in beta and I think it's cool. <laughs> I, and yeah, I think, I think we'll have plenty to talk about lots of changes coming because the group that's behind this is very, very active. So we're hoping some of them have actually showed up today and, and we won't be punished for what we say. Because <laughs> well, we're trying our best, right? It, we love it very, yeah. and we want more people to do it. Yeah. And, and even we, and we're in the program and we have questions. Mm -hmm. So it's like, there's lots and lots of questions about this. And maybe the thing is, is that they're like the, the, the people running the show are like, well, we're not sure. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, we, we haven't figured that bit out yet. So I think it's like, we're just kind of like a little bit at a time and we're all, I don't know, holding hands and learning together on this one. So that's all good. That's good. It's always nice. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you for being here today, Kevin. Do you have any fine? Well, so we pretty much, you know, wrapped it up. So um, is there any, any, anything else you'd like to add though, before we say goodbye? Just enjoy each other, right? Support each other, collaborate with each other. Networking always beats not working, <laughs> right? Do it and uh, it will reward you. That's all I can say. And thank you. I love you. it. I love it. 